steps in the throne. Don't let me get in my zone. Don't let me get in my zone. Don't let me get in my zone. The stars is in the building. They hands to the ceiling. I know I'm about to kill it. How you know I got that feeling? You are now watching the throne. Don't let me into my zone. Don't let me into my zone. I'm definitely in my zone. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hurricane Game Day here on CSS. Time to talk about University of Miami baseball with Hurricanes head coach Jim Morris. Hurricanes are off to a good start, and now they are in the middle of ACC play, which is going to be a grind all the way through until the NCAA tournament. As far as this year's squad is concerned, pitching is the name of the game. Yeah, the bats have really changed the game, you know, and, and made it more realistic, I guess uh, you can say. But, you know, it, it, uh, a lot more strategy comes into play. Defense, you know, has always been important, but now it's, it's uh, magnified that much more, you know. So small mistakes that lead to runs is, is really tough to come back from at times. And, you know, it's just uh, you got to play the game the way it's meant to be played. When it comes to offense this year, the club is going to have to manufacture runs. One of the key players in the middle of the lineup is senior outfielder, Chance Mack. One thing I like to do is hit by myself, like during my extra time, hit, hit alone because you know yourself better than anyone else does and I really, I was just trying new things and I really started, started to feel comfortable and Coach Morris gave me an opportunity to pinch hit at bat uh, against Duke last year at Duke and I hit a triple and from that game forward I stayed in the lineup and I just kept producing, kept helping out the team. Still to come on Hurricane Game Day, we'll sit down with University of Miami skipper Jim Morris, plus assistant coach J.D. Arteaga, and hear more from outfielder Chance Mack and his intriguing story of how he became a Hurricane baseball player. All of that and more right here on CSS. Well, we're young. Uh, we're starting young guys. They're battling hard. They're working hard. Our strength is our pitching, in particular our starting pitching. And uh, with that said, that's been without Whaley and B-Rad uh, a lot of most of the year. So we're just getting those two guys back. So it so should only strengthen our, our pitching. So but that's really been our strength in our defense.
Welcome back to Hurricane Game Day as we continue here on CSS with University of Miami head coach Jim Morris as the baseball season is underway and we are into conference play. And uh, coach, uh, into conference play, one of the great conferences, I guess we should start there in all of America and especially inside your own division. Of course, but uh, the entire conference is an outstanding and uh, I think it's outstanding in every sport, to be honest with you. So, uh, but baseball is as good as any of them. There's always as many teams ranked uh, in the top 25 in the ACC as there is any sport in the ACC. And as you say, our division is, uh, is uh, tougher than the two divisions, so it's very tough. And, and in 2014, we're going to bring Notre Dame and Pittsburgh and Louisville in, and both the two of those teams are ranked. So it's a, it's a great conference. Every weekend it's a battle, and, and if you don't battle, then they got a new coach the next year. So it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wild scenario. It's very, very tough. What are some of the things that uh, you like about this year's squad? Well, we're young. Uh, we're starting young guys. They're battling hard. They're working hard. Our strength is our pitching, in particular our starting pitching. And uh, with that said, that's been without Whaley and B-Rad uh, a lot of, most of the year. So we're just getting those two guys back. So should, so should only strengthen our, our pitching. So but that's really been our strength in our defense. That's the way college baseball has kind of changed a little bit here the last couple of years. Um, because of because of the way the game has gone the last two or three years, it's had a rolling effect on how you put together a team, right? What well, is? I mean, we don't we don't hit many home runs, and neither does anyone else. But uh, so it's really changed the number of runs you score. Uh, you got to you know you got to emphasize speed a little bit more and defense more and pitching more because the the days of uh, scoring ten runs every night. Not, it's not going to happen. Uh, uh, we're averaging 4.7 runs right now a game, so uh, that's, that's not a lot of runs. You got to pitch. And you got to play defense if you're going to win. It's uh, it's come full circle. It's uh, a year where you're celebrating the life of Ron Frazier, who who passed away before the baseball season, and the way he became the Wizard was playing small ball and, and putting pressure on the other team. Well, it was, but it was a little bit different scenario too with that AstroTurf he had. Uh, as far as the you know having guys chop the ball and run and uh, uh, versus a grass field and uh, and and it was great back then but personally you know I would much rather have a grass field that plays the game the way uh, you know you would normally play it and uh, and I would like for the bats to be a little livelier too so we did have a little bit more excitement you know uh, I know back in the, the slogan was girls dig the long ball yeah. you know when it used to be in the, in the late 90s and everything but. Uh, that game has changed. You're gonna have to like. I guess they're gonna have to like pitching now, huh? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, <laughs> you have to dig pitchers. Yeah. Uh, Let me pick up on Coach Frazier for a moment. He's are honoring him all season long, and uh, he's a very special person for the University of Miami for college baseball, and influential for you as well. Well, he's the most influential guy in my career. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Coach Frazier. No question about that. Uh, he helped me as a young coach, as a young player, going back 40 years. Uh, I met Coach Frazier in 1973 when I played with the Red Sox. It was my first year and, and, uh, and I worked out down here and got to meet him and talk with him and stuff. And then as a young coach, uh, as a junior college coach, he, you know, he, I was, he was right there for me. And uh, at Georgia Tech, we copied the program after Miami. I actually brought our business manager and assistant athletic director down here so Coach Frazier could explain to them how he does things so we could try to, to copy what he was doing, you know, marketing. and and everything so uh, and then coach Frazier was the first one to call me about the Miami job so uh, and I was the guy that he wanted to come in and he told me that a long time ago so uh, way before I was co going to coach here even though I'd really never expected that to be the case 
you've made defense a priority this year, and, and so far, so good for the most part. You're right. I mean, Figures played solid defense at, at third. Of course, he's back from last year, and then up the middle with uh, with Lopez and Hernandez that played outstanding and, and turned double plays and, and make some big plays at first base. Uh, Thompson and Barr are, are over there, two new guys, two freshmen. I mean, we're starting a young club, no question about it. And they're, and they're uh, on job training, I guess you would say. And uh, it's, a, it's interesting to watch and see how these guys are going to develop. Do you anticipate all year you'll have to manufacture runs? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we're not going to hit a lot of home runs. I mean, uh, uh, David Thompson's got two home runs that's leading our team. We have. So we're not, uh, we're not going to hit a lot of home runs. We're going to hit a few. But it's been cool. And when it's cool, the wind blows in, the ball doesn't carry. This is a big park where the wind's blowing in. And if there's no wind and the ball carries, then it's a you know, normal size park. And of course, the wind can blow out and it can be a few more home runs. But uh, David's got uh, as much power as anyone on our team, along with, uh, with Hyman. Hyman. Grant Hyman's got another freshman who's got great power. So uh, those guys have got as much more power than anybody. Uh, speaking of David Thompson, a kid who always wanted to be a Hurricane, and uh, I think one of the things that's made athletic programs great here at the University of Miami are those players that have dreamed of growing up uh, wearing the orange and green. You know what, you're right, it, it is, and it's always fun when you're recruiting a guy that says, you know, I want to play at Miami. If we can make this work, I want to play, and they're almost kind of recruiting you while you're recruiting them, which is a great scenario. We're very lucky that most kids in this city grew up watching Hurricane Baseball and have been to our games and been to our camps and, and uh, our fans and they want to play here if they can make it possible financially. So that, that really helped us a lot in recruiting with the fact it's great baseball down here. Smack falls into that category. Kid's going to graduate uh, in the fall, but he falls into that category. Absolutely, and we do. We got some guys, but even guys from outside, you know, Bobby Hill from California was dreamed or always dreamed of playing in Miami. So we got guys from the West Coast, the East Coast, uh, Jacob Hayward, uh, the senior in high school this year that we signed. His brother's the best player for the Braves. So he wanted to play at Miami. We're lucky that those kids did that, uh, that they want to play here. They, they almost recruited us to, to recruit them. And he's a great player. So that scenario of the baseball program has got a lot of uh, attention. There's been a lot of TV games, a lot of stuff that's really helped promote our program. Do you think um, as you incorporate Razuski and Whaley, you have to be kind of patient with results because uh, if you're able to get those guys back, whenever it is full time, that really does strengthen your club. Well, they're back, you know, but they're, they're back to pitch and they're right. being a start in rotation. Uh, but uh, uh, they, they, it's almost like spring training, the start of fall practice or start of spring practice for them. To, you know, they haven't thrown any innings basically, so they're, they're kind of thrown into game. Okay, let's get it done, let's get them ready as quick as we can. But with that, they may not locate as well or may not be able to get their breaking stuff over. So it's, uh, it takes them a little bit of time, but ultimately, we're lucky that uh, our, our pitching's been outstanding up to this point without them. I guess what I'm saying, you kind of have to battle here in the early part of the conference season until you get your your lineup figured out and sorted out, right? Sure, I mean it is. It's always a, uh, a work in progress to figure out what's going on. You can play as many inter-squad games as you want, but when you turn on the lights against a different team, you find out who can play the game. Some guys can practice, some guys can play the game when it counts. Some guys hit when it counts. I mean, I, I got to tell you, Figure was was had a, a bad fall and a bad preseason spring, bad. And look, he's leading the team in hitting and playing well. So, and he's a, he's a gamer, and he did the same thing last year. Something tells me he got an extra eye in the sky this year, so there could be a little magic. I hope so. The way I look at it, it's a great chance to, to earn some respect, you know, and, and, and really jump up in the polls. And we've gotten off to a good start. That uh, you know, right now I believe we're 13 and four. And still, I'm not sure if we're ranked in the top 25 or not, but uh, it's just a, an opportunity for us to go out and prove what we're capable of doing, going on the road against the top team in the country, a team we've had a lot of success, success against.
with University of Miami pitching coach J.D. Ardiaga. And uh, J.D., when we think about pitching staff this year, I guess first and foremost is you have to work around some injuries. Yeah, a little scary going into it, you know, with uh, you know, Eric Whaley and Brian Rozuski being out or guys that you, you, you figured to be your number one and two starters um, being down and, and out for a good couple, two to three weeks. Um, but uh, Diaz and Salas have stepped up and done a, a great job for us in, in, in those two roles. And, and you got guys like Woodry and Grandin Eddie, two freshmen that have stepped up and, and, and done a good job for us as well. And, and, you know, Suarez coming back from injuries really helped out as well. Uh, your first two starters are doing a pretty good job for you to keep you in ball games. Did a great job. Their first uh, three starts of the, of the season, I think they might have given up two runs between the two of them. And, um, they both had a little bit of a rough start against Duke. But, uh, you know, it's baseball. You know, you learn and, 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 and make adjustments and, and come out the next week and then pitch better. You have some big games coming up against North Carolina. Uh, they're playing very well. They're ranked number one in the country and they're undefeated. The way I look at it, it's a great chance to, to earn some respect, you know, and, and, and really jump up in the polls. And we've gotten off to a good start that, uh, you know, right now I believe we're 13 and 4. And still, I'm not sure if we're ranked in the top 25 or not, but uh, it's just a, an opportunity for us to go out and prove what we're capable of doing, going on the road against the top team in the country, a team we've had a lot of success, success against the last couple of years, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Down the road, if you get Whaley and Rizuski back into the, into the rotation consistently, uh, or we're able to use them consistently somewhere, how, how much of a benefit would that be? Oh, it would be a huge benefit to, to the whole staff. You know, it, it'll add a lot of depth. Um, We've been fortunate that our starters haven't gone deep into games, and we haven't gone have had to go too deep into the bullpen. Where, you know, we're I guess, for lack of a better word, be our weakest spot, just not having the depth there. But those two guys add depth, and uh, the biggest challenge is to see who who's in the starting rotation, who your top three is going to be. But it's a, a pretty good problem to have. Right, that would be a great problem to have. I think what people uh, tend to forget is that these uh, those are your one-two starters basically from the last two years. Yeah. Or number one starters from the last two years. Two years ago, uh, Radzuski was our Friday night starter all year. You know, at, uh, all 14 of his regular season st uh, starts were on Friday nights, and, and Whaley's had the best ERA in the rotation the last two years. Uh, he's, he has not had an ERA over three as a starter. And again, it's, it's a compliment to, to any staff having those two guys back. Uh, we mentioned it earlier, but pitching in this division, let alone the conference, pitching in this division might be uh, difficult. Georgia Tech's hitting the ball. Virginia's got pretty good offense. We're going to see Carolina uh, in terms of when we say good offense, they're hitting above 250 as, as a club. But uh, this is a very tough division. It is. Uh, we feel like this, our, our side of the, of the division of, of the league is, is tougher than the other, you know. Um, but again, it, it's just going to, it comes in cycles. We just, uh, with Carolina and Virginia and Georgia Tech, it's, it's just loaded right this year with their offense anyway. They got eight of the nine starters back from a year ago. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun league. It's competitive every weekend. You never know what's going to happen. And, you know, just go out and play the game. How important is it, though, to have the mentality for baseball that it's not a sprint? You got this is a marathon and it's still very early. It's very early. Hey, you're right. It is a marathon. And, and baseball is the one sport where you really have to deal with failure. You know, you could be successful 30% of the time and be considered the best hitter in, in, in the game. So you, you got to learn how to deal with failure. Uh, uh, bounce back day to day, you know, no five night tonight. It, it doesn't mean you know, within 24 hours you're back out there again. You know, as, and as and pitching wise, as a reliever, you might blow a save on a Friday night and, and again, you're out there in the eighth, ninth inning on Saturday. You better get it done.
All right, with Chance Mack, one of the team leaders, and uh, Chance, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the season, the way it's going so far. Uh, got off to an undefeated start, and now we did conference play and uh, inside conference play. It's going to be a battle all the way, isn't it? Yeah, uh, the ACC is it's known as one of the top two toughest conferences, you know, with the SEC, ACC. Uh, there's a lot of great teams in our conference. I mean, you have North Carolina, number one team in the country right now. You have, they're undefeated. You have FSU, I think, is undefeated. Uh, Virginia's lost one game. Uh, we've only lost four games. So, I mean, it's a lot of competition in the ACC. I mean, you look just inside your own division, and, and you mentioned some of those teams, uh, Carolina, Virginia, Georgia Tech, Miami. That's good enough for a college World Series right there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a lot of talent. Definitely a lot of talent in this conference, in our division alone, with those teams you just mentioned. So. It'll be a grind all season. How special is this year for you, uh, your last year as a Hurricane? Yeah, uh, you know, I love the U. I love everything about the U. I bleed orange and greens. We're always wanting to be. Um, I'm just trying to give it my all. I want to do whatever I can to win, to help the program for now, for the present day, for the future. And I just want to go out on top at the U. I think uh, you're a great example to a lot of uh, college athletes in any sport because you are a senior and you're trying to savor every minute of it, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, I mean, I'm always, I try to get here as early as I can, you know, do extra work and just, when I'm done with the extra work, I just relax in, in the locker room and just soak it all in because I mean, you have those guys that voted early to the draft and whatnot through the previous years and they tell you it's it's such a different world in the minor leagues and and if they didn't make the minor leagues in the real world and I'm just trying to enjoy this while we have it because it's, it's a real blessing. Yeah, you enjoy not only playing baseball but you enjoy the time you have on campus here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm very social, I guess. <laughs> I like to talk to a lot of people and meet a lot of people um, because I think that helps out in the future as well as especially in this day and age, it's a lot of who you know. And this is a very prestigious school, a lot of smart guys and smart people. And I feel like it's important to you know, meet all those people and just really enjoy with those, the other kids, the friends I've made, the real like college atmosphere, college environment. Oh, well, you know what they say, right? You network to get work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you have to. So you're already networking. Oh, I'm networking yeah. <laughs> everywhere. And they talk a lot about your swing and you really have been able to uh, develop a nice stroke? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think that just comes with hard work. I mean, if you want to be the best, you got to work. You have to. You have to practice. And that's, that's what it was. I mean, of course, I asked uh, Coach Gino Damari, he's a hitting coach, to, you know, to go over film with me, you know, see, see what I was doing wrong and what I could have changed. And we sat, we sat upstairs in the film room and we went over things. And then, like I said, I would just go outside by myself and try to just feel it, like get that feeling so that if I'm not doing the right thing, I can feel that I'm doing that wrong thing and adjust and I think I'm taking off from there. Where'd you get your work ethic? Well, I think that's my dad and my, my parents, honestly. Uh, they, they really believe in hard work. Uh, my dad works really hard. Um, my mom works extremely hard, uh, especially like around the house and whatnot. So. <laughs> Uh, definitely my parents. Well, Chance Mack is genuinely one of the great Hurricanes in all the sports down here at the University of Miami, whether it be football, basketball, or baseball. He is a great ambassador for the University of Miami. Tough schedule coming up for the Canes, North Carolina, and Virginia Tech on the horizon. Thanks for joining us right here on Hurricane Game Day, and we'll see you next time right here on CSN.